Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Did you bring your thinking caps? Because it's time to put them on. Because the conversation starts. Dude. Now we're virtually married. Okay, virtually. Oh, don't use that word, but yeah. Okay, virtually married. All right. <laughs> Hello, brains. Welcome home. Yes, you're right here. Are you excited? Because we're excited. Oh, yes. I've got the beautiful, amazing uh, poet and HR professional and life coach. She doing it all, brains. Right here on the edge, Monica Bogart. We're going to talk about some stuff. Some grown folks business. See, I love it when I get my sisters on here because we can take you to the house, okay? Some of y'all white folks ain't never been in a room with us. Well, you're in for a treat. <laughs> we get a real deal, 110%. I'm so excited to have her because, you know, she's going through a, a, a edit and a shift right now. And I'm trying to help her get through it. Trying to figure out what she wants to do for the next portion of her life. How she's going to help others navigate and weather the storm because she doesn't want them to be alone. And I understand that. So we're here with her. Welcome to The Edge, Monica Bogar. Thank you for the invite. It's an honor. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. So how you show up in the world, Queen? What is really going on? What is really going on? Um, I have many years of HR and I'm taking those skills and implementing those into life coaching. Uh, my niche and focus is women and uh, personal and spiritual uh, coaching is my preference. Um, I've actually written my first book. Um, it's called The Shoe Shiner's Wife. And it's about how um, God takes a woman in an uh, incarcerated mindset and releases her to grow in, in her incubator. And she discovers that she's not in prison. God just has her in the incubator to grow. So with that being the case, um, that's basically what I focus on right now in my life uh, when it comes to um, what I'm choosing to do as a professional and, and making a difference. So when you're in an incubator, mm -hmm. you know, um, you're being kept warm, you're being kept safe. You're being you nurtured. You get an opportunity mm -hmm. to grow. And hopefully if you're a chick, you're going to get some feathers. <laughs> <laughs> but there have been people that have been incubated too long. Absolutely. And they have been nurtured too long and they have been suppressed and they've been held down and they've been uh, encapsulated to where they Absolutely. don't, you know, they don't have wings to fly. What right. do you say to that woman right now that's struggling? Well, I would say, well, first of all, in my opinion, God doesn't leave you an incubator too long. Mm -hmm. You either going to step out or he's going to push you out. Mm -hmm. So um, whatever you have available at that time, you're going to have to do the best that you can. Now, he won't let you hit the ground, but he will definitely push you out of that incubator. Um, I would say to that woman, it is okay. It's all right. It doesn't look familiar and it will not look familiar because now you're going to the next chapter. You can leave that life of mental incarceration behind you. That's not what's in front of you, but you take one step at a time. Sometimes there are moments when you get to the edge where you don't have to look up and down and around for years to figure out and decide what you want to do with your life. Sometimes you got to close your eyes and trust and step in faith or jump. Um, but when you get to that point in the incubator, you know when it's time to come out. Do you trust when it's time to come out? Not always. Are you afraid? Absolutely. But know when it's time to step. God won't let you fall. You won't hit the ground and you'll be amazed what happens when you come out of the incubator. Okay. So now you out the incubator and you back in the office in the HR. <laughs> and you yeah, got that yeah. person that, wait, when you got that person that's coming in there like me, girl, let me tell you, I, uh, <laughs> HR was one of my favorite places. Okay. Uh, when I entered and when I exit. Exactly. I, I, was one of, I was one of those people that I would quit. If it was just too much for me, I would respectfully just say, you know what, I've had enough. I don't tell people, very many people this, but I have had over 33 jobs. 33. That sounds like me. And, wait, wait, wait. and then my son goes, Mom, you know, you can't hold a job. I said, a job can't hold me. 
Come on. <laughs> okay, that's what it's about. But I would make friends with everybody from the CEO to the janitor. It's it about is. networking. It it's is. about knowing the people. It it's is. about knowing when customer service is not going to work for you. Accounting is not going to work for you. You've done it. Exactly. You know, when you've done certain things, what do you say to the person that's wanting to make the transition respectfully out of a corporate career? I would say follow your heart. Don't be willy nilly. Get a strategic plan. You can't do everything at once. Uh, be very intentional about your steps and it can happen and it's okay to not fit in a box that the world designed for you stand in your purpose that you call to and it's okay to know you and the things that make you happy and things that don't make you happy so um, don't look around at the world's uh, process and platform create your own one step at a time and have you some money saved <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the process and that's checking the boxes. So <laughs> Okay, because being an entrepreneur is the hardest job it you is. can have. Oh, it is. You're You've right. got to create the business, develop the business, brand the business, sell the business, market the business, get paid on the business. Absolutely. Uh, pay your taxes on the business. Okay? Try to work you out some vacation. People think, oh, I want the freedom. Freedom my foot. You work, there's no baby for entrepreneurship at all. You're you're it 24 hours a day. 24 I hours know. a day. You be on vacation networking. Who is the next prospect? <laughs> really? Who, who am I gonna meet? Yeah, got to have your business card. And don't be somewhere with me and you don't have a business card. I, I don't I'm the no, electronic lady. Right. Electronic or you know the the what the, the little what's that little thing? The doc. The, yeah, the little cute card thing. Yes. Give me some way to contact you. And then when I contact you. Or uh, you contact me. It's the follow up. See, so many entrepreneurs trip themselves up. Yes, they think they're excited with that big twenty five dollar word, but baby, you could be entrepreneur in a minute. <laughs> Definitely in a Definitely. nanosecond. You don't have guaranteed health care. You, you don't have vacation. You don't have four hundred one k. You, you don't. don't have sick time. You on the grind all the time. So realize what you're asking for, because being a W two employee is not a bad thing. Okay, it's not. you can go in, be an independent contributor, do great things at an organization, get your paycheck and go home and let somebody okay. else worry about it. So it's twofold. You have to figure out really where you are and what you want to do. Absolutely. And if you're an entrepreneur, you've got to have multiple revenue streams. You have to. Absolutely. I you have got to be to selling revenue. books and juggling and cooking and T-shirts. You got to do all of that. <laughs> You, you've got to have that brand. You have oh. to. So when people look at your brand, what do you want them to see, Monica? Resiliency. Mm. Transparency. Amazing character. Mm. God-like person. Mm -hmm. That's Mo. That's Monica. Well, then you need to just go and get you some wings and a halo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It might be a little tilted, but I can definitely get it. <laughs> That's okay. You know, uh, I hate to say it, but Satan was God's most perfect angel. Yes, he was. You know, yes, so, he was. so things happen. And and all of us have a little Satan in us. We do. You know, we do. All big ones. Yeah. We do. And so we're all a work in progress. We're all working through that. Mm -hmm. You wrote a book. I Where's did. that book at? Let me see that book. I don't have it. You don't it's have a cover paper. of it? You know the cover of it yet? I don't. It's okay. all ebook on Amazon. Okay. And it's called The Shoe Shiner's Wife. I like it's that. Not in, it's not in print yet until the end of May. Okay. So I, I unfortunately I don't have the book yet, but I do have a pre order on ebook. I mean a uh, ebook on Amazon. Okay. And again, it's called The Shoe Shiner's Wife, and it's about the transition of a woman as a wife um, from a mental prison married to a narcissistic male who's a domestic worker and she loses her see wait 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 brains you see what she said he, she was a domestic worker he wasn't an entrepreneur <laughs> <laughs> he, he was he was cuckoo crazy but he had a job <laughs> that was the requirement now that was the requirement <laughs> but he was uh, a domestic worker and 
I don't know if she thought she could fix him or I don't know what it was, but um, mentally she put herself in a prison um, of belittlement. She met society in that negative space. She did the same things to herself that society did. And this particular, uh, her spouse did. And long story short, God took her all the way to the floor and rebuilt her. Wow. And her prison that she thought she was in became her incubator. Mm -hmm. And she finally stepped out of the incubator to be who she is today. So is there a little memoir in there? There There's a little little self-discovery there? There is. Most definitely. Most definitely. Tell the woman that is um, out of the incubator. She's okay. doing a, she, she, I want you to talk to the sister that's doing her thing. I mean, she's at the top of her game. She's making money. She's shining. She's flying with those uh, things. She still has doubts. She still yeah. has self-limiting beliefs, but she's ready to soar. What are you saying to her? It's okay to be human. Life is going to happen. Mm-hmm. But don't let anyone or anything devastate you or take you off your track right. of what your purpose is. That's right. Stay on your game. I can't specifically say, you know, break down what you, you will encounter because everybody's different, but you will encounter those challenges. It looks like you're alone in the process because people won't understand it. People won't get it. You've never been in this space before. This is all new. But with this being a new space to you, just know you are equipped. You have everything that you need and you can determine what you want to do and you can make it happen. And nothing and nobody will ever stop you, ever. No, unless you let them. Unless you, and that's up to you. Unless you let them. And to have choices and options and feel the fear and do it any doggone way. Do it anyway. Do it it anyway. anyway. And it's going to sting. It's going to hurt. You're going to cry. That's a part of the process. Absolutely. That is a that's part the of the process. That's the shaping. You're right. That's right. And that's the molding. Uh, the pain is really the exciting part because when you go back and you journal that and you go back and you <laughs> look and you say, oh, look at where I was and look at where I am today. You Hello. are going to just, just wow. And then you're going to be ready for the next step. That was a challenge that I ran into is that Me too. Uh, in December... I asked the God, I asked God for something. And girl, he showed up and showed out. <laughs> and quick too. I was like, whoa, you know, because I'm a manifester. I'm a big I mean, when I talk about a big dreamer, I'm a I'm a big dreamer, big dreamer. Uh and I was like, wow. I had set three goals. I done accomplished them already. And here it is, just the first part of the year. I said to myself, oh, my God, now I'm nervous because Mm -hmm. I've got new goals. But you know what he said to me, girl? Sat right next to me. He goes, oh, no, no, no. He says, I've given you everything you want. He says, and now it's time for you to be a service. Come on. Girl, I started shouting and crying. And he said, (laughs) he said, big service. Okay. You ain't going to just go and feed the homeless at the soup kitchen. Oh, no, baby. You're going to run a soup kitchen. Come on. You're going to get the food for the soup kitchen. You're going to get the money for the soup kitchen. you going to do it because I'm going to be there with you because I know that you can do it. And I I'm, I get goose pimples. You should see my arms. It's just full of them. Because when God talks to you in that little sweet, angelic, gentle voice, there's no misunderstanding. There's not. There's not. And that's, that's what pretty much happened to me recently. Um, I purchased, the, well, rented a uh, spot for a jazz venue. I'm a jazz singer, a jazz artist. And um, I walked into the building and I said, there's no way. And I walked out and I said, well, I'll try. I fill out the application. I get home. The man's already left me a message. I'm I'm just like, right now, I'm still blank. Right now, I'm like, did I, this is what I asked you for. And hmm. this is what you gave me. So I can also use that space as a meeting event center for engagement with women, uh, public speaking and things like that. So it has a multiple, it has multiple um, opportunities. And I'm, I'm like you, I, I said, okay, what do I do? And he simply told me what, what did you ask me for? Uh, so I said, okay, I know what to do. People that don't believe, I'm sorry, I hate to laugh in your face. <laughs> <laughs> I really, 
really do. But for the non-believer, you are missing out on fact. Wow, yes, yeah. confirmation. Okay, Indeed. okay. I'm Indeed. telling you, I have asked, girl, I'm so, so wow. don't tell me Hello. that God ain't able. And don't Hello. tell me about the power of manifestation. But see, you can manifest some hell, too. You can. And that, that side of the world, I've been. I knew it had to be something else. So you know, I've learned. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely you know, right. You can talk about people. You can shame them. You can be jealous. Jealousy is a very real emotion. It it's is. a very real emotion. My mother it told is. me about this little girl that when she was a little girl, she, you know, she was so jealous of her. She had long ringlets and long curls. My mother was so jealous of her that she sat behind her and cut <laughs> curls off of her in the classroom. Oh. Yes. Oh. And the little girl ended up dying of tuberculosis. Oh, my goodness. My mother, when she was 91 years old, she still talked about that. Oh. So what is for you, you cannot miss. It's got there, your there you go. name tattooed on it. Absolutely. Life you is don't a have to see board. through the process. No, life is a smorgasbord, and everybody's not going to have the same thing on their plate. Don't put That's no Oprah right. on mine. I can't stand no Oprah. <laughs> no Oprah for you. Don't worry. <laughs> no Oprah, but you can put a lot of collard greens and some cornbread and some chicken, you know, and that may not, you know, you may be a vegan and don't want no meat. And we say that in a in a in a humorous way, but it's very real. It's very real. It's very real. You know, very, very we real. giving it to you 110%, even from an HR perspective, from a work perspective. But now we want to move into some poetry. Uh, you are a poet and I am a poet. I'm gonna read I one am. of my poems after you read one of yours. So please mm -hmm. grace us and introduce what you are about to read for us. I'm excited. Okay. Um it's not a long piece. Um, it's called My Case, and it's really about um, the woman in the book, her view of the man that she's married to. And he has one image that he shows the world, but she, being his wife, sees a different image. So it's called My Case. My love for flowers and organization does not match your preferences. Your love for chaos, confusion, disturbs my love for beauty and finer things. Your spirit reflects the inner man you desire to be, not the real man you are. Your doormat acceptance of life takes away the classiness associated with your hat that matches your shoes, that matches your life. Before the I do's, I felt the isolation and effort to remove the ghettoized behavior associated with your past. Unfortunately, the relationship you are a part of has allowed the cancers of your past mm. to move away the medicine of your heart. Wow. Each file of life holds the true pages of who you really are and have the desire to be. The reality is that you are just a classy dreamer chosen choosing a minute world peace is a very unfamiliar place where you dream of moments that lie deep within within opening my case to be happy closing this one wow uh, <laughs> you sound, wow you sound like you sound like the new supreme court justice okay? <laughs> hey, look don't give me no don't give me no efforts okay. that's right that's right but you spoke to him and i love how you said you know your cancer because it's eating away <laughs> at you yeah it really is and it's pushing away the medicine to heal you yes which could be me i yes. get it so my piece, a lot of you receive these in the mail. I don't know if you can see the lights on it right now, but they're bookmarkers and yeah. they have a lot of my poems on them. And this one's called A Student for Life. Yes, that's right. I'm a student for life. The heaven's gate, I hope to gain admission because daily I pay my tuition. Studying ESP, technology, love, chemistry, sociology, humanity, long suffering. Psychological dysfunction, chemical dependency, and economic poverty. Majoring in astrology, I'm still trying to figure out who it is I really want to be. This course load is heavy, but until my journey is complete, I will never receive a degree, not an undergraduate or a PhD. See, my teacher is Jesus Christ, and he still got to grade me and save me 
and raise me. I hope and pray that I can pass with at least a C and prove myself worthy because I want to give back to the community. Amen. Oh, I love it. See, look, you got to do one of these numbers. And like, class yes, 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 yes. I love it. That's so, beautiful. Thank you. So who's your favorite poet? Who's one of your favorites? I say Nikki Giovanni is one yeah. of my favorites. Yeah. It's because she speaks from a deep perspective that could apply to anyone. Um, I think Maya is one of my favorites, but she speaks more from a woman, in my opinion, perspective. I think Nikki speaks from a human being perspective in her poetry. So I, I like Nikki. I love Langston Hughes. Of course. And yes. Tupac. Okay. I, knew I knew Tupac before he really? passed away. Yeah, girl. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. From, two, from Tupac and, and Snoop Dogg, girl, when we get offline, I'm going to tell you some stories that occur your <laughs> afro. <laughs> Yeah, what you got? I'm lying. It's a real story. <laughs> real story. The real deal. You know, but really, um, I met um uh I met Maya different different than the persona that I saw on television. We'll talk about that too. Uh but very, very captivating. The energy changed in her presence. You know, it was it was a a command of, of elegance and regalness. You know, there wasn't just no flim flam. And the last poets, because they were revolutionary. They Absolutely. started the slam poetry. They yes. started putting mo poetry to music. My drummer actually played with the, the last um, the last poets. I need to do a set. I'm so glad we back out in public. Maybe I'm going to have to come down there and get on your stage. Yes, do. Uh, but yes, it do. is just so much that poetry speaks to people. And there's so many different ways. You don't have to rhyme. You can tell you a don't. story. You can have broken English. But you the pouring out of emotion is what is passionate and what is powerful. And Absolutely. that is what you have been with me today. And I thank, thank you so, you. so much. Please thank tell you. my brains how to get in contact with you, Monica Bogart. Well, I have a website. It's MonicaOBogar.com. That's my HR and consulting side. And then I have Boss's Baskets by Mo. Those are corporate gift baskets. But you can also call me uh, on my, I'm open to a phone call and a conversation for consulting, as well as um, something else we can do that you feel like maybe God's called. So give me Monica some email. Give me an email. Email's perfect. It's MoBogar.com. M O B O G A R dot com is my email address. That's where you find her brains outside of here on the edge. Thank you so much, Queen. I appreciate you for being so real and transparent, you opening up your heart, and uh, you know, really kind of having this conversation because a lot of people don't get to be in the room. But girl, y'all gonna wish you was in the room when we get off this call because I'm gonna tell her some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but that's for next time, brains. I love you deeply and completely from the bottom of my socks because my heart. Just isn't deep enough. Bye, Monica. Bye. Thank you. Bye, brains. Playing in a white sock. What? <laughs> Wait, no, uh, hanging out. Wait a minute. Let me stop this. Hanging out.